there are sort of two basic kinds of agreement, but you know, it's, a, it's a, essentially a spectrum. Options exist in between. And in terms of processes to achieve agreement, um, there's statistical agreement, which is you achieve those numbers, right? You get your kappa of above 0.7, you get your percent agreement of above 90%. That's statistical agreement. And then there's also consensus coding, in which all team members agree on the codes for everything that you do. And so sometimes statistical agreement isn't doable. So I was on a project recently in which we were um, analyzing online forum posts and we were doing a discourse analysis. And uh, we tried to achieve statistical agreement uh, and it just didn't work. We just couldn't get there. And uh, the way that we were understanding the codes, they were so interpretive, they were so analytic that it was really difficult for my colleague and I to apply them similarly. So the person who was managing the project switched out one of the coders and had us do consensus coding instead. In other words, we coded separately and uh, all, of the, all of the posts in this project. And then after we had coded everything, we met in a coffee shop for a long time. It was like eight hours. Uh, so this is, a, this is an extreme example, right? So we met in a coffee shop and went you know, post by post and code by code and recorded how we had coded similarly, how we had coded differently, and resolved any differences. And so that, in that project, is how we achieved iterator reliability. So this, it's an extreme example, but it sort of illustrates the difference between the two. So, and often you get a blend, right? In statistics, there are quantitative measures of iterator reliability. Uh, and so this is a really common question I get as well. You know, what, what do I have to achieve in order for this to be okay? Like, what number do I have to get? So I have an answer for that question, and then I have a but. So if you're using percentage agreement, you like to see a percent agreement of above 90% uh, after having gone through an inner rate of reliability process. You like to see a kappa coefficient of above 0.7 after having gone through an inner rate of reliability process. Uh, leaving aside what those are for the moment, the but is that it's never sufficient, in my opinion, and, and in the journals I've published in, to just sort of give them a number and, and that's it. So we achieved a 0.8 kappa and a percent agreement of 95%. That's not enough information. Uh, regardless of whether or not you provide a quantitative measure of agreement, it is important. To, for you to describe the process for your peer reviewers, for your, um, for your colleagues, um, for your advisor, to explain how you arrived at those numbers if you use them at all. So uh, I often get asked, how do I report on my inner rate of reliability? Um, so, and do I have to report a number? To answer that question, I'm going to assume that you're an academic researcher here and you're aiming for a peer-reviewed journal. I always tell folks to look at the journal that they're aiming for and see what other qualitative research have done, whether they've reported the number, um, their percent agreement, or their kappa coefficient, or no. Regardless of whether you report that number, I always recommend that you report on your process as well. And so that requires that you keep good track of what you've been doing, decisions that you make, and, and the process that you used for iterator reliability in order to report on it. But I always recommend that you at least report on that process um, regardless of whether you use the numbers. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if people cheat or not. I think that a number, to report a single number doesn't do justice to the process of coding your data. Um, and I think that a single number hides a lot of things um, that might be embedded in that number, right? So you might have a particular code that you're reporting on that you didn't agree on and your coding was very different, but your overall number was pretty high. So um, just think critically when you're reading qualitative research about what those numbers mean.